Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Justin Young, and he is Josh Tech, and we are Hoopscene.com coming at you with the Just a Minute podcast. It's been back. We had to blow the dust off the machine. We had to get back on the video. Josh, what's going on, man? Uh, not too much. Just keeping busy. You know how we do it over here at Hoopscene headquarters. I know, man. It is basketball season. When you feel the air getting crisper, even out here in the desert, we know that basketball season is right around the corner. College practices are happening. NBA preseasons are happening. And the aliens are coming to Las Vegas and Big, big Victor uh, Wayamboya name that I think we're going to have to get to know. So basketball is starting to percolate, and we definitely can feel that it's uh, right around the corner, man. I know you're fired man, up. Sure basketball is always percolating here. I know. You're a junkie, man. It's in your veins, bro. It's year-round for us. I love it. I love it. Well, we want to get back to the conversation here at the Just a Minute podcast every single week. Somebody from our Hoop Scene staff is going to be on here. We want to keep you educated. Heck, we may do more than once a week for all we know, uh, but definitely want to get back on camera and back in the podcast um, universe or whatever you want to call it. But we're going to talk about some things. Keep it short, keep it quick, and we'll get right to the very point, Josh. What's the thing? We got a lot of things we want to talk about, two particular. The big things this week is a huge commitment for Southern California, which may lead to another commitment from another Atlanta area prospect. We just had the elite preview camp at Swanee Sports Academy. You were there for the duration. We're going to talk about some of the top performers and some of the top uh, breakout guys from that camp from our annual fall stage. Let's get right to it. Arrington Page from Wheeler High School is headed out to Los Angeles to play for Andy Enfield for the USC Trojans. What is he getting in the big fella, Arrington Page? So... What he's going to get, what USC is going to get out of Arrington Page is an athletic, you know, kind of physical big guy who can play above the rim. But what he's added to his game a lot recently is a guy who can also stretch the floor. Like, he's been pretty consistent from the three-point line. And, you know, as we might touch on a little bit, when he has a certain point guard around him, he can really <laughs> put some highlight reel plays together at the rim with alley-oops and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sometimes recruiting is like a poker game, right? You're always looking for tells. And so you talked about Arrington Page going there. And we know that Isaiah Collier, a guy that we love so much, a guy, one of the best guards that I've ever seen out of the Atlanta area, a guy that I think will probably eventually be our number one player in the 2023 class nationally, has whittled his list down. And, and USC is right there in the mix. I think Cincinnati is also a school that's going to be a player. USC, uh, remind me, who's the last one? Who's the fourth school? Oh, uh, so he's got USC, yeah. UCLA, Michigan, and Cincinnati. Do you think that this USC commitment from Arrington Page plays a role for, for Isaiah Collier? Is this a tell? So I would I, I kind of would say so, but before Arrington committed to USC, I kind of thought Isaiah was going to be the first one, you know, the first, you know, domino to fall, so to speak, because <clears throat> there's been some, you know, little hints and indications here and there. Like, for instance, uh, I was at a Wheeler practice. Andy Enfield was also there. Um, and after that practice, Isaiah tweeted something about his uh, his commitment date coming soon, right? And then on a recent yeah. trip to LA, Isaiah tweeted his commitment date. Um, so it's kind of like, okay, you know, just like without hard and fast information, it's kind of reading the tea leaves. So I thought Isaiah was going to be the first to commit to USC, and uh, maybe he doesn't. But um, but this Arrington page certainly doesn't hurt. You know, it's always interesting to see like the timeline for prospects, right? Like you nailed it. Like who goes first and does a guy going there take a spot? Obviously a guy like Isaiah Call, you find a way to make sure that he's on your roster to, no matter how yeah, many dollars for you sure. have. Uh, but, you know, on the basketball side of things, we've seen Arrington Page get better because he's played with Isaiah Collier. And there's some value yeah. there. And the way that USC uses their big guys, most notably the Mobley brothers, Evan Mobley, I think is a great, uh, you know, way to look at how they can utilize players this year's freshman class is tremendous with their bigs with Kajani Wright, uh big vince i don't know how long he'll be out uh with with his uh health this year but there's players there trey white a guy that i think could really have a huge season as well uh for the trojans as a freshman so when you look at errington page now you mix in the possibility of having a program changing guard like isaiah collier certainly does make you think somebody asked me the other day and i want to ask you this and i'll and i'll kind of chime in on this who does Isaiah Collier remind you of at the NBA level, past or present? Man, that's a that's a great question. I'm gonna have to let you go first because, like, I I don't really have a great comp for that. I kind of got thrown off guard. Guard. In I that love time. it. Well, I mean, that's the pod, bro. That that's just the right. minute. Right. No, I get it. I get it. I just I just hadn't even thought about that. I've been so focused on where's he going? Where's he going? Where's he sure. going? 
That's my my answer has always been Tim Hardaway Sr., honestly, from, from okay. the GMT days. Like, like to me, like that is that is the type of guard that I think that Isaiah Collier can be. He's big, he's strong. The part that I've been the most impressed by with him is his his evolution as a physical player, right? A guy that can oh, yeah. take contact. Um, you know, he's big, he's, he's huge. He looks like Ed Reed from the Baltimore Ravens now. I mean, just big, muscular, strong, explosive, uh, can really score. I think he's probably more athletic than Timmy Hardaway Sr. Uh, but that's right. the type of guard that I see there with with Isaiah Collier. So, I, and with with Isaiah, he keeps leveling up. Like when he took that little time off for, uh, to nurse that little knee problem he was having, I feel like he got even bigger then. Because when I saw him like reemerge from that injury and I saw pictures of him at, you know, the uh, that event in Chicago and stuff like that, I was like, oh my God, this dude just stayed in the gym during yeah. his injury. Like he looks even bigger. And, you know, there's the couple knocks I've heard on him, you know, since I've been doing this has been like, oh, he's not a great three point shooter. Well, he always comes up in the big moments and hits big three point shots. And then he's not a great athlete. Well, he keeps working on that and he's pretty darn good athlete at this point. So I don't know. He just keeps leveling up. You know, we said, you know, it's funny. I think about this. I went back, I read it. I was looking for an old story and I read this story uh, from the city of Palms. And I think it was probably like 2000 and I don't know, maybe 15 or so. And the lead question was, can Jason Tatum be a threat shooter? Right. So like, right. sometimes we have like these great questions for some of these great players and that's why they're great is they know how to level up. They know how to address the areas where there's, there's room for growth. Obviously now you draw plays up now for a guy like Jason Tatum in the playoffs. Right. So I don't think those things are too big of a worry. You can help guys become better shooters. Um, and that is certainly the big difference between him and Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway was a guy that could absolutely get you a bucket from three. Uh, no doubt about it. So, you know, speaking of Isaiah Collier, he played at our elite preview before he ever played a high school game uh, at Wheeler High School. And our fall preview every fall is an opportunity for the underclassmen in the Southeast, mostly in the state of Georgia, mostly in the city of Atlanta, to really kind of jumpstart the conversation about the type of player that they're going to be. And I remember a conversation I had with Isaiah before he ever played a game. He was the first guy that I wanted to find when we had our elite preview camp. And I said, hey, man, listen, here are the characteristics of a great player that have come from the city of Atlanta. It was a great conversation. He locked in eye to eye. And I was like, okay, there's an it factor with him that, that I really like to see. We had a number of guys play at our elite camp over the weekend, last weekend. Um, and I want to kind of talk to you. You were there. You had a chance to see. Uh, off the top of your head, give me three guys that were the very, very best at this year's elite preview camp. All right. So I think the first name that probably would probably come to everybody's mind was Deke Cooper out of Woodward Academy. Uh, six foot six, super athletic wing, kind of does a little bit of everything. And he really flexed that versatility on both ends of the floor this weekend. He was hitting shots from the three point line. He was creating off the dribble. He was finishing above the rim. He was guarding multiple position, uh, multiple positions. He just did everything. And uh, what I like about Deke Cooper is uh, he looks like a guy like Isaiah who's gotten a little bit physically stronger so i think he's just you know going to keep leveling up and he's already established himself as one of the best sophomores in georgia yeah. i think that's just going to continue um outside of cooper uh max mcneil he might have had the best day out of anybody i saw at camp uh whenever i was you know around Jannard and uh mcneil would make a play we would just keep looking at each other like oh my god this dude's like lighting it up today you know he's a guard um kind of shifty cr uh, crafty in his attack he scores the ball for multiple levels. He's a really good passer. He kind of just plays with like, you know, really admirable poise and confidence. Um, and I think that's a guy that might not be, you know, in that same Deke Cooper range right now, but he's a guy that I could see leveling up and keep developing into that, like, you know, maybe top 15 player in the state at some point. Okay. And then the last guy who's also one of the most like productive, impactful players of the day was Eddie Cook out of Burkmar. And this is a, you know, six foot five ish wing with a real or six foot five ish guard with a really, you know, physical, strong build. So he was, you know, out rebounding the bigs, but he was also creating all of his team's offense off the bounce and stuff like that. And uh, he was a guy that was at our, our camp last year. Um, and then this year was one of those things where we could, you know, visibly tell how much better he had gotten yeah. in the last year. So look out for Eddie Cook at Burkmar sophomore because he's a guy who's already leveled up. And I could just see him keep leveling up. Like if he, you know, gets his athleticism intact, like um, that's going to be a guy that's pretty much impossible to stop. I love the repetitive guys that come to the elite preview for this exact thing. You've got an A versus B opportunity to evaluate to see where guys 
get better to see where guys improve and to really see like, is this the crossroads of their development as a prospect? I'm glad you brought up D, D Cooper. I love D Cooper. I've watched him on film so much during the high school season last year. Thought he was a guy that was on the upswing and, and, and looking forward to see what he can be. You know, that classification has been, a, been home and that region has been home to some really good players out of the state of Georgia over the last five, six years. So uh, I'm excited to see where Deke Cooper takes his game and, and uh, to see if he can continue to level up there. You know, we know about the stars and we've talked about them ad nauseum now on social media. Make sure you follow us on Hoopscene or at Hoopscene on Twitter and, and Instagram. Uh, but there's also some guys that were breakout guys. And, and what I classify as a breakout guy is, is somebody that maybe we didn't know much about that came out to camp that really kind of played his way into the conversation. There were some players for you that kind of fit this criteria, weren't there? Oh yeah, absolutely. There, there, this is the best camp for that because it's, you know, there's, you know, some freshman 2026 guys that quite, quite frankly, we don't watch a lot during the summer. Right. Um, and then it's like, who the hell is this guy? And then he's just like lighting it up. Um, so yeah, there was several of those guys. And uh, first and foremost on that list, a guy that like, I don't really think anybody knew anything about that just like wowed a bunch of people was Vincent Wells out of Seconder high schools. Um, he was like a guard with just like, he had the ball on a string. Like he could, get wherever he wanted he can create his shot he can create shots for others he was just like dazzling people with his you know ability to get to wherever he wanted and you know do whatever he wanted essentially um and he was one of those guys where it was like it was a revelation for me because I was like who is this guy like he is just like sure he's cooking people but then as I was realizing other people were realizing like you know AU coaches or you know parents or whatever and they would come to me being like who is this guy I was like look I'm having the same revelation you are right now I have no idea like we're we're all discovering this guy together you know it was a really fun kind of what school is he to experience he's at Seconder 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 high school what state is that I don't know what state that is what state is that? yo look look at when I said that to people people were like I don't know where that is it's in Georgia he's from Buford so it's like that kind of north Georgia ish area like around Swanee yeah. I'd assume I hadn't heard of that school before I mean there are a million schools it's hard to know all of them but yeah I hadn't heard of them before well, make sure you go to hoopsing.com, look up on the app and find out more about Vincent Wells. Um, obviously, there's some other guys. Give me a couple other guys that really kind of fit the criteria of a, as a breakout player. Right. So in that same regard, with you know, keeping the ball on a string, being able to create blah, blah, blah. Uh, Dre Clark out of uh, Parkview High School. He's with uh, Norcross Heat during the travel season. Okay. The 2025 guard. And, um, you know, I would say I saw him once or twice during the summer. And then I saw him again at Hoopsing Fall League. But this uh, elite preview camp was when he impressed everybody other than me. Like, Gennard was asking me about him. Other people were asking me about him. Like, who is this guy? This guy's like, you know, he's killing it right now. It's like, yeah, I mean, he's kind of a, a guy that's not a ton of people know about right now. But that's going to change soon because he can he can really, you know, handle the ball, uh, distribute, uh, create his own shot. He can really score it, shoot it. Like, he's just a really great creator right now. Without. And then uh, another guy. Uh, we're going to move away from the guards and we're going to go down to South Georgia with Chris Perry. He plays the South Georgia elite over the summer, that team. but yeah, he had a broken that. arm. So he, he was out for the entire summer or, you know, most of it at least. Uh, so we didn't get to see him, um, but he's, you know, six foot six wing and he's super athletic. And you could tell that he was like, you know, shaking off some rust because he's only been back playing basketball for about two weeks and he was out for like six months. So, but you know, with him at camp, you could tell that, you know, he had the athleticism. He has, you know, a really well-rounded offensive game. He can, you know, create his own shot um, from the mid-range. He can shoot it a little bit from the three-point line. Um, you know, he has the physical tools to be a really, you know, impactful defender. Right, right now, I think he, he can pretty much guard anybody, one, you know, one through five at this level. And I think that uh, he's a 2026 guy, by the way. So I think that he's a guy that we really need to, you know, keep an eye on down in South Georgia because he has a high, high ceiling. Well, if you've, if you've listened to anything that I've done over the last 20 years, you know I love a player from South Georgia. One of those guys is Jordan McRae, who's his travel coach. Uh, when Jordan was coming up down in, in Brunswick area, uh, Savannah area, McIntosh, uh, to me, and Jordan had a great career. Went to Tennessee, actually played for my brother in the G League, uh, you know, was a big-time scorer in, in the G League, played in the NBA. And, you know, Jordan was like, hey, listen, this has this guy has a chance to be just like how I was when I was coming up. So when a guy like Jordan McRae says that, you got to pay attention. You got to listen. I'm glad to hear that uh, he came out there to camp. I'm glad he impressed uh, Jannard Hartley, the guy that you got to get to know uh, for sure on our Hoopsine staff with your teams and your players. You know, I talked to Jannard the other day about camp. 
And, you know, I, I'm out here on the West Coast, so sometimes I'm not as connected to knowing, you know, who exactly is at the camp. It was cool to hear who were some of our coaches at camp, guys that played in my original camps that I ran back in Georgia, like Cameron Tatum and Jordan, uh, uh, Jeremy Price and Mike Mercer. And, of course, we had Coach Bird and Daryl LaBerry and these great staffs and these great players uh, that have been around that have had the same experience. So it was good to hear that these players – had a chance to uh, to work with these guys and, and to get to know them. And one of the reasons we do these camps, particularly for the freshmen and sophomores, it gives us a jump start for not only our state rankings, but is there a guy that needs to be on the national platform? Is there a player that can play his way into the national conversation? Certainly we see that every single year. If you look at the players that have played in our platform, the elite preview out of the Southeast, there's so many guys now in the NBA. They're all conference guys. And of course they made their way to our national rankings. We want to include a rankings conversation every single Just a Minute podcast this year. And I, you know, as we kind of get started, there's a lot of different ways. Well, sometimes we'll dive into Georgia. And if we have Justin Byerly on our show, we'll talk about North Carolina or Garrett Tucker, Alabama. Um, you know, Michael Constantin's down in, in Florida. We'll talk about that. Andre Whitehead, potentially in Tennessee, me out here in the West. So we have a lot of areas that we can kind of dive into. But sometimes we take a big picture look um, at the national rankings as well. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, let's go ahead and start with the 2023 class because it's the one that's right in front of us and you know we've both been out to a lot of national events but you've probably yeah. been to a little more than i have so um i want to ask you something you know what's the theme of this class what's the what's the strength of this class i don't know that's a great that is a great question because i don't know if there is a theme i don't know i think the theme has always been for us at least up until probably our last rankings i gotta admit like like we had a great conversation offline about Isaiah Collier and I've always tried to really be a non-biased person. And people always say, Oh, you guys overrate guys from Atlanta. I get it. I hear that conversation, but I would argue, look at the, look at the drafts. There's so many guys from that area that are always being drafted that high. We put Isaiah Collier number two behind McK uh, McKenzie. Um, uh, McBuck, uh, I always screw up his name man. help me out, Josh. Mbaco. Thank Mbaco. you. I think I the a, G is silent. I had a brain freeze. Uh, but certainly he's a guy, you know, is committed to Duke. He's going to be uh, a player that I think that uh, will remind some people of, of, of high school Cam Reddish, like a, a mix between him and maybe even R.J. Barrett. So a guy that if you're, you're at Duke, we have him number one. And I think Isaiah, Isaiah Collier has made his case to be number one for us. You know, with Mookie Cook, number three, going to out, you know, he's out here at AZ Compass Prep. He's going to Oregon, the Portland, Oregon uh, native. But then we got a guy like Isaiah Booker who is going to Michigan State that, uh, you know, falls in line with the narrative. What's that? Xavier Booker. What did I say? Isaiah Booker. And we've, I know we've got oh. Isaiah Collier on the line, but yeah. I Xavier thought Booker. I said Devin Booker, so that's where my head's at. But yeah, Isaiah, <laughs> I see I did it again. Xavier Booker, who's going to Michigan State, but really kind of proves the point that you don't necessarily have to be a shoe guy. You can be an independent. And I think that's a theme that you're going to hear quite a bit with us over this season, and especially here on the Just a Minute podcast, that we really believe in the power of the independents. We're going to talk a lot about this year. But I think that's the theme is still – Who's going to be the guy that can really impact the game right away as a freshman? And then from there, are there players that are going to be no brainer players that you want to get in the draft and, and spend some draft equity on? And I don't know yet. I think we're going to see a lot of guys that maybe use college rather than the prep level to really kind of elevate that, that conversation. But if you go to hoopsing.com, you click on the very top on rankings, you can find our rankings here on our mobile, on our desktop. You can, you know, click through, go to their player profiles. There's a lot of things that you can do on there. So Jared McCain going to Duke, one of the best ball handlers and, and creative guys there is in, in the country, but certainly a lot of stuff to look through. But to me, that, that is, I think the narrative for this class, there's still a big question mark and there's still a lot of ways to go. I mean, heck there may be a guy listed right now outside of our top 60 that could be a pro and it happens every single year. And I'm interested to see how this class yeah. continues to play out. And we're going to see a lot of these guys like I'm, you know, I'm act actually, we can kind of pivot like on what's on tap. I'm headed out to Vegas this week to go to the border league. You know, we'll see some guys out there. You're going to be down at a number of national events down in the Southeast this year. In fact, our whole staff is going to be out there. So we're going to keep our rankings pretty fluid throughout the year, not only on the national level, but the state level and have a lot of depth as well. So uh, that to me is what gets me excited a little bit. What's on tap for you coming up uh, around the corner, Josh? Um, so this weekend we have our Hoop Scene W Camp. I will be there right. at Swanee Sports Academy covering that. And the following day is our Hoop Scene Fall Preview. Um, I will also be there covering that. 
And then after that, you know, kind of maybe laying low a little bit, just getting ready for the high school season, or I'm just going to go hard. Like, you know, I'll be out at games, you know, more often than I'm at home. So where can people follow that. you on social media, Josh? Give me your social media handle. So on Twitter, you can find me at, uh, at underscore Josh Tech. That is underscore J-O-S-H-T-E-C. And yeah, you can, whenever I go to events, I'm always posting, tweeting, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, just that over there doing my thing. I love it. I love it. Of course, you can follow us at uh, all of the social media platforms at Hoop Scene. Make sure you subscribe to us as well on YouTube. Like and subscribe, as the kids say. Let's help that algorithm out. Let's get this Hoop Scene uh, YouTube platform going up as well. We're going to try to do this on a pretty regular basis. Uh, it may not always be me and Josh. It may be somebody else on our staff, but we want to have some sort of constant conversation as far as Hoop Scene is concerned. I also love the fact that you rock the Atlanta Braves hat. Salute to you. Let's go Bravos and see what kind of magic we've got here in the fall. But uh, certainly a lot of topics of discussion. Next week, we'll talk about the fall preview camp. We'll talk about Hoop Scene W a little bit. Obviously, we're going to talk about the Border League and guys that rise and fall in the rankings as well. But plenty more to talk about. For Josh Tech, I'm Justin Young. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate you listening. And we'll have a lot more for you here throughout this season coming up. Until next time, take it easy.